Okay, kids, gather round. I'm going to tell you about a time, a time when much of known knowledge came from 100 pounds of books that only the fanciest kids in your neighborhood had. These were books that were prominently displayed in living rooms all over the world. They defined status between the haves and the have-nots, but not the smarts and the smart-nots. Now we can all learn from all sorts of media instead of just the books, encyclopedia. Listen up, Gen Zers. Before today's seemingly magical way of accessing information instantaneously from the palm of your hand, we had these. Volumes of books called encyclopedias. So an encyclopedia is an informational resource, kind of like you think maybe a dictionary, except instead of just giving you the definition and etymology of words, it can tell you anything about it. And it's reliable information. To tap into the history of these quintessential books of information, we called upon the Henry Ford's librarian, Sarah Andrus. When was the first encyclopedia written? If you want to travel back with me to about 77 CE, there's a Roman statesman called Pliny the Elder. He's really interested in all things information and just knowledge based. So he wants to write down everything he knows and everything he can find out. Pliny the Elder's writings were published as Naturalis Historia. The first encyclopedia we consider in the Western world. What is the next watershed moment for encyclopedia? 1750 is when Denise Diderot comes into the picture. He's a Frenchman. He decides with some of his friends that he's going to write an encyclopedia. She's gonna get a group of people together to write on their own expertise. Britannica is a big name when it comes to the encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. Britannica comes about slightly after Denise Diderot. You get a team of Scotsmen who decide they can do it better. So in the 1770s, they create a society to fund the first Britannica. In about a year, year and a half, they publish a, their first edition. By 1793, they're on the third edition. The third edition is widely popular. Now you have multiple editions and multiple writers. By the 11th edition, Britannica was sold to an American publisher who restructured the entire layout. A single edition went from 17,000 articles to 40,000, as Britannica became the gold standard of encyclopedias. During the 20th century, door-to-door -door salesmen were knocking on doors across America, selling sets of encyclopedias. Full disclosure, we were not a Britannica family. We were a world book family. The red one right over there is a 1940s edition from wow. when encyclopedias are super popular in America. Oh Families can actually start buying them and using them in their house. And you can decide which information you think is the most relevant and which publisher you want to read. But some good things must come to an end. Britannica printed its last edition in 2010 and moved entirely online. And most of us by now have heard of Wikipedia, the crowdsourced digital encyclopedia, bringing age-old information to the new tech generation.